Hi everybody. Today I'd like to share with you a very well-known fable called Jack and the Beanstalk. Most of us had this read to us as children, but did you know that embedded in the story is some cosmic information about the golden egg? And we're going to look at the geometry of what we call the golden egg or the phi egg. And we're going to look at its construction but just as a quick review we see jack here climbing up the beanstalk but he actually goes up three times first he goes up and he um he steals a bag of gold and what does gold represent wealth but it's golden coins that's golden wealth he gets so but he gets a bit cocky and he says i'm going to go up a second time and when he goes up a second time he steals the, the, the goose that lays the golden egg. And what is the egg a symbol of? We all know it's about creation. But something happens on this third time. He gets more cocky and he says, I'm going to go up a third time. But this time the sleeping giant wakes up as Jack is stealing another thing called the, a golden harp. And what does the harp represent? It's not just music, it's frequency and it's vibration. So that's what I mean. There's a, these are metaphors for our own astral health, about health, wealth, and understanding the, the world, the creation of who we are, where we came from. So um, so I did a little sketch here, and I'm just going, and I've redrawn this again on the board so that we can um, get a little bit more understanding about how the egg form is created. So, um, so first of all, um, we're going to examine a circle in a square and if you think of a circle in a square which is simply drawn by um, opening up our compass we put our compass here we've got this here and we we arc this around we arc this around and what we have is a circle but what I've done cleverly is it's a unit diameter so this distance from G O D the distance from there to there is actually one unit and so every time we do sacred geometry, we always work with what we call the unit circle or the unit square. So this whole square is one. Now, we know that this distance here is this radius of the circle is half of one. That's a half and that's a half. So the secret to this egg construction is that if we can calculate this hypotenuse, this if we can calculate this distance from there to there, we can calculate everything about the egg construction. So. Um, I'm going to show you a bit of algebra and I don't want you to get scared. I want you to love algebra because just I'll quickly go over this. I just want to show you that this square here is called the unit square. And we know from Pythagoras' theorem that this whole diagonal, this whole length from there to there is called root two because one squared plus one squared equals root two here. And root two is 1.414. So now we apply the same thing here. We've got a half and a half. We say a half squared plus a half squared equals x squared because this is the unknown. It works out that x equals root 2 on 2. So we know that this is root 2. So what's half of 1.414? It's 0 0.707. So I just wanted to show you that if you want to crack the egg open, if you want to lay your egg, if you want to understand the mathematics of the universe, we need to know Pythagoras' theorem. And, and it's not really Pythagoras. We know that it's been known to many Vedic cultures and Babylonian cultures and Chinese. But the key is Pythagoras' theorem. So now I know that this distance here is called root 2 over 2, or we could call it 0 0.707. Now, because I know this distance, I know this distance here. So this distance here, this distance along from there to there is the same as there to there because what that is is um, if this if this here is the um, diameter, I draw an arc. I drew this arc here, so we know that if this is one, this distance is one. So this distance here must be one. Take away root two on two. So straight away I know that that's point two nine three. So that's very simple geometry. So what we're doing here is we're constructing the golden egg in four arcs. So this is called the four arc construction. So the first arc is this semicircle here. That's one arc. Then I put my compass here and I did this arc here. I, I arced here. I put my compass here and I did an arc there. So, so now we've got one, two, three arcs. 
And to get the fourth arc, all I do is I put my point here at the top of the unit circle. We know this is one. I put my compass here and I draw an arc here. So what this, the final arc creates the most um, emblematic or the most defined type of egg. We know there's millions of types of variations of eggs as scientists that have spent their lifetimes analyzing thousands of different egg shapes and the mathematics of it. But this is a diagram, I think from ancient Russia about a hundred years ago. And, and it's also found in the works of Victor Schauberger and Callum Coates. So this is a, a very well-known diagram. I'm not actually sure who did the very first diagram, but what, what we're calculating is we know all the measurements now. We know the measurement of every line. So let's look at what we call proportion or ratio. What is the proportion of L-O-V-E? This vertical line of the egg, L-O-V-E, we can call that love. So love divided by this distance here at the center of the circle, E-O. So we know, we know this whole distance and dividing it by this distance here, the answer is 1.63. And we know that that's an approximation to the golden ratio, which is 1.618. So the golden ratio is 1.62 close, and this is 1.63. That means the error is about one, um, one in 100. It's not much. So what we've just this, what we've just ascertained is that the golden egg in the relationship of its long axis to the, to, to the next length here is approximate golden ratio. So that's what that represents there, all because we knew this distance here by Pythagoras' theorem. And the last bit is that there's two dominant axes. There's L-O-V-E, there's the vertical axis. We're going to divide that distance by the, the original axis of the circle here. And that's called G-O-D. So love, L-O-V-E, divided by G-O-D, love divided by God, has an actual value of 1.293. Again, because I've calculated all these air measurements, we know that the ratio of the long axis to the short axis, which is the diameter of the unit circle, is 1.29. And we know that the golden root is 1.27. So the ratio of the long to the short is called the golden root. And what, what is the golden root? We, we know that the to get the magic number of the phi ratio, 1.618, we have to ask what number multiplied by, its, by itself gives 1.618. And the answer is called the golden root, which is 1.272. And because so we know that this is phi. And the golden root is called the square root because 1.272 times 1.272 is 1.618. And that's all expressed in the egg. But it's only an approximation. So when I wrote this title of the golden egg, can you see how I did the E as an equal sign with two dots? Because when we've got the equal sign with two dots, it actually means an approximation to. So we've... We can't ever get a perfect egg in exactly 1.618033. There is another diagram from the Pentagon. There's another beautiful diagram where we can get all the harmonics of the golden ratio. But for today's purpose, we wanted to show that this is an approximation to the golden egg and that there have been other authors on the internet. There's many authors who are claiming that if we make this distance not one, we could make this two phi we could make this distance phi, G-O-D could be phi or double phi or triple phi. And as they fudge all these figures, there's actually fundamental errors in a lot of notes on the internet because they can't ever get this distance right. They're, they're, just, just, they're only getting approximations to what we've shown you. So what I've shown you now is the template for the phi egg. This is the mathematics of creation, the mathematics of our higher self. Hope you enjoyed this parable of Jack and the Beanstalk. And there's a link to all of this in our um, e-courses coming up. Thank you.